Hey folks, Hugo Rivera here, and today I have my good friend, uh, natural Mr. Olympia and Mr. Universe, uh, John Hansen. How are you doing today, man? Good, Hugo. How are you? Great, thank you. Basically, today we're going to go ahead and talk about your new program, which is the MP6 program, and I'm super duper excited about it. So, uh, what can you tell us about that program? Well, basically, the MP6 program stands for Muscle, Power, and Six. There are six week cycles. The first one is for power, so it's, it's specifically to increase your strength. And then the second one, of course, is for mass. So you're taking the strength that you build on the power cycle, and you're using it now to build more muscle mass. And the reason for the cycle, or the reason for the whole program, is because everybody knows that in order to build more muscle mass, you need to use the most weight for the best growth producing reps, right. which is usually like six to 10 repetitions. Mm -hmm. So the more weight you can use for six to 10 reps on all the really effective growth producing exercises, the more muscle mass you would build. Right. The problem becomes as we become more advanced and we get stronger and we get bigger, it becomes harder to use more weight. We always reach yes. plateaus, we always reach sticking points. Right. So by using a cycle specifically for building more strength and more power, similar to very much to what power lifters do, yeah then you can use that power to use more mass, to build more mass when you use the regular six to 10 repetition range. Exactly, and I think that's one thing that a lot of people uh, neglect is the periodization of the training variables, which is the number of sets and the number of repetitions and even the rest in between sets, they need to be cycled because if you don't cycle these kind of things, then that's when you reach the plateau. Right. And that's when, you know, you go ahead and you stop to grow. Right. And people, you know, they think it's in the supplements, the, uh, the solution, but it's really not that. It's the training and the nutrition, exactly. the, the key things, you know. Um, basically, you know, what was your reason for creating this program? Well, Hugo, when I, was, when I was a kid and I started off training, I was 135 pounds and I was very skinny and, and I used to read the bodybuilding magazines and I would look at the pictures of these guys and I would think it was almost like they were from another planet. Yes. You know, I mean, I never thought that I could build my physique to look like that. It just didn't even look realistic. Right. And so then pretty soon I discovered what the secret was to building more size. And the secret was using the most weight for the basic exercises, barbells and dumbbells. Yes. Um, doing it drug free, we have to limit the amount of sets. We can't use 30 or 40 sets per muscle group Correct. because that's obviously too much and the body can't handle that and you're going to overtrain and not grow. So it's basically using the right amount of sets, the right amount of reps and the best exercises. And then it's just basically a matter of eating enough food mm -hmm. and building up your strength and using the most weight for those six to 10 repetition range. Right. If you look at the history of bodybuilding, if you can go back to the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the biggest bodybuilders always used a lot of weight. You know, if you go back to the 1950s with yes. Bill Pearl and Reg Park, Reg Park was one of the first bodybuilders to bench press 500 pounds. Bill Pearl used to use over 350 pounds on the press behind the neck. I mean, these guys were massive guys, and yes. they were the top of their generation. You know, and then you get to the 1960s, Sergio Oliva, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Sergio and Arnold were both weightlifters and powerlifters before they got into bodybuilding, and that's why they had that massive raw size. And then you get into the, the 70s, you know, guys like Mike Menser. Um, all the big bodybuilders from every generation, they all used a lot of weight. Nobody ever got there by pumping up and doing lot, lightweight for a lot of reps. It just doesn't happen. Right. The only way you can build massive raw muscle mass is to use the heaviest amount of weight for that six to 10 rep, rep range. And the way I did it when I was young was I just went in, I trained as heavy as I could for six to eight reps. I ate as much food as I could. Obviously, when you're young, your metabolism is going very fast. You can eat a tremendous amount of calories. And that's what I did, and it worked. As you get older, however, how do you keep making progress? Right. You know, your body reaches sticking points. Your testosterone level starts to go down as you get older. You know, for the guys who are in their 20s, they don't have to worry about that. But when you get into your 40s and 50s, it changes. So how do you increase your strength? How, do you, how are you still supposed to train heavy when your testosterone level is going down? And the way you do it is by specifically training for power. So I would do, on this program, this MP6 program, we do six-week cycles where you're specifically training to increase your strength. And then when you go and train back to the six to 10 reps, now you're much stronger, you can use more weight, and the result of that is more muscle mass. Right, and, and research clearly indicates, John, that 
you know, you can go ahead and achieve hypertrophy, okay, by training a little bit light, but there comes a point where it's not going to continue to happen because that cross-sectional area of the muscle needs to learn how to become stronger. Yes. And unless you maximize the strength of that cross-sectional area, you're not going to keep growing, exactly. you know? You right. just hit that plateau and that's why a lot of guys, you know, they're like, well, I have never been able to increase my bench or, or the size of my chest. Well, why? They keep doing the same routine they did from the beginning for three years, right. you know? Right. So it's like, that's it. You have to manipulate the training variables in such a way that it increases your strength yes. at the end of the day. And, and I think that's what basically are the benefits to the system, you know? Isn't that the case? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've all gotten good pumps in the gym and you look in the mirror and you look great because you got a pump and everybody can do that. I mean, we can do a set of 30 push-ups and get a good pump in our chest, but that's not going to build real muscle mass. Right. If you look at the muscle cell itself, what makes the muscles bigger is when you're actually thickening up those myrofibrils, those muscle cells themselves. And the only way you can do that is to impose more stress on it for the right amount of repetitions and that's the six to 10 repetition range. So the more weight you can use for that six to 10 reps. Now if I go lighter, I mean if I go lighter and I'm doing more reps, 15 to 20, I'm not imposing enough stress on those muscle fibers for them to get bigger, for them to grow in size. If I go heavier and do one to three reps, I'm getting stronger by training the ligaments and the tendons, but I'm not training the muscles because I'm not doing enough repetitions to get the blood in there to get those muscle fibers bigger. The magic number is that six to 10, and that's what's gonna make those muscle fibers themselves bigger. Now, there's the sarcoplasm, which is the area around the muscle cell, or around the muscle fiber in the muscle cell, that you can increase by doing more repetitions, increasing the blood flow in that area and getting that pump. So I'm not saying that's not a part of muscle mass, but the real basics is using enough weight for that six to 10 rep range where you're gonna actually increase those muscle fibers and that takes time. And the only way you can do that is to train those muscles heavier. And if you don't do that, for example, let's take a 140 pound kid who comes into the gym, he's 15 years old, like I was when I started training. Mm -hmm. If he does weights where he's doing 15, 20 reps, pumping, 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 yeah. there's no way this 140 pound kid is gonna get up to 220 pounds of muscle. No. He can't do it by just pumping, pumping, pumping. There was a great story that I use in the MP6 book about Bill Pearl, one yes. of the great legends of bodybuilding. And he, as you know, he owned a couple gyms in the California area and he trained a lot of people. He trained a lot of Mr. America winners, Mr. Universe winners, a lot of Mr. Olympia, Chris Dickerson, he trained him. One of his students one day came up to him and said, Bill, when I do calf raises with just my body weight, I get a real big burn in my calves, so they must yes. be growing. Even though he's just using his body weight, he's not using any weight. Right. And Bill said, well, if I put a match to your calves, you're going to get a good burn, but that doesn't mean the muscle's going to grow. <laughs> and it's true. It's you, have, point. Yeah, you have to subject that muscle to more stress, and the only way to do that is you have to get stronger. Absolutely. And you know, I think that's one of the key things of your program. It's going to go ahead and get you stronger. And it's something that, you know, a lot of programs these days really don't focus on, to be honest with you, you know? Yeah, exactly. A lot of programs focus on feeling the muscle and getting the pump. And, you know, the form is, is important. There's no doubt about it. In the MP6 program, we have over 75 different exercises where I show you exactly how to perform the exercise correctly. Because, you know, if you're doing a barbell row, you want to make sure that you're focusing on the lats and that you're doing it correctly. And every exercise, you need to do it correctly. But once you have the exercise performance down, it's a matter of increasing the strength. And the more strength you can use, the more strength you can build up, the more weight you can use for those magic six to 10 rep range, the more muscle mass you're gonna build. And this works for everybody. I mean, when I was in my 20s, like I said, I did it just by eating a lot of food and just going in the gym and training heavy, heavy, heavy. Right. And you know, when we're 20 years old, nothing hurts. Our joints don't hurt. We can just do whatever. We can throw caution to the wind and we can get bigger. For but sure. that doesn't work when you get older. And I have a guy who used this program in this gym who is 70 years old. He's been training since he was in his 20s. That's amazing. And he gained strength and he built muscle mass in his 70s. So that just goes to show you, you can do it at any age. The muscle is always the same. Absolutely. Your testosterone levels might change and everything, but the muscle fibers are always the same. And if you impose stress on it, it's going to respond by getting both bigger and stronger. And I think one of the things that I love about your program is that you, you took the time to do these exercise videos because 
like you said, you need to get the muscles stronger, but a lot of, uh, especially teenagers that are starting out, they think, okay, well, I'm going to go heavy, 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 but their form is absolutely terrible. Yeah. And by you taking the time to do these super awesome videos, then, you know, they'll be able to get that execution going because at the end of the day, you want to lift as heavy as possible within this six to 10 parameter, but the, the, the performance has to be there. The execution has to be perfect. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, you'll just end up getting injured. You know. Yeah. We did it. We did it two ways. We did. Um, I picked the best growth-producing exercises. So, for example, with back, I picked like lat pull downs, wide grip chin ups, barbell rows, dumbbell rows, T-bar rows, deadlifts, rack deadlifts, and we show the best growth-producing exercises to do. And I show it in perfect form. And I have a voiceover on every video on exactly how to perform it. In addition to that, we filmed two full workouts, one for power and one for mass. So I show you the exact workout, the way I perform it. So I show you how many exercises to do, what your repetition range should be for the power cycle, and then what your repetition range should be for the mass cycle, how many sets to do, how the warm-ups go, and then the working sets go. So the, anybody who buys the MP6 program is going to have all the information they need. They're not only going to have all the exercise demonstrations to know exactly how to perform the exercise correctly, but they're going to see two actual workouts, a power workout and a mass workout, so they know exactly how they can adjust it for their own, their own workout to do it, and they know how the intensity should be. They're going to know the focus, they're going to know the intensity that you need to make gains. And another thing that I love is that you cover your nutrition very much in detail in this program, which again, you know, training and nutrition go hand in hand. Absolutely. You can't, you can't have one without the other. And again, a lot of people just really miss the boat when it comes to this. But I love the fact that you cover the nutrition in detail and you say, okay, this is what you need to eat. This is why before the workout, after the workout, you, you kind of like put that into very, very simple sort of ways. And I really like that about the program. Another thing that you cover that a lot of people may not understand, and you covered this in your, in your uh, website, is basically the, the deloading effect. Can yeah. you talk about the deloading effect? Because I think it's super important, and this is the key yeah. to getting that kind of uh, muscular growth through strength increases. Yeah, because whenever you're using a training cycle, or for example, like when I was younger, I didn't know about cycles, and I didn't, I didn't do it scientifically. I just went into the gym like a bull, and I trained as heavy as I could with the basic exercises, pushed my body, ate more food, and it wasn't really detailed. It wasn't cycled in detail. There wasn't any periodization. Yeah, you and I both. Don't and you, worry. whenever you do that, even whether you're 20 years old or 50 years old, you're going to hit a wall eventually yeah. mm -hmm. because your body's going to break down. It's going to get injured, it's, or you're going to just hit a plateau, and you're not going to increase anymore. Your strength's not going to go up. Your muscle mass isn't going to go up, and you need a break. We take that into account with the MP6 program. So every cycle is six weeks, and it slowly goes up. You're not using weights that you can't handle. You're using weights that you can handle. So whether you're doing a maximum effort that you've never done for three repetitions, you can, by the time you get to that week, you can handle that three repetitions. But at the end of the six weeks, it ends, and then you switch cycles. And the deload is basically, like when I was training when I was younger, when I would get to a point where I felt like, man, I need a break. I'm, I'm injured or I'm hitting a wall. And usually it was like several weeks when I really needed the break. I would just take a week off. Right. But the deload, you don't take a week off. What you do is you just take it easy on your body. Right. You cut back on the weights, you don't push the intensity, and you take both a physical and mental break from the weights, but you're still going into the gym and working out. Mm -hmm. And then after that deload week, by the end of that, you're ready to get back into the gym. You're, you're itching to get back into the gym. And then you go into another cycle. Now you go into the mass cycle. And you can keep going like that. You can keep going all year long without ever taking a break. Because what I found is when I took a week off, when I came back, you know, I felt more refreshed, but I would get much sore and I was a little bit weaker. With the deload, you don't get weaker. You just, you stay strong because you're not really taking a break from the weights. You're still working out. You're still getting the blood in there. Right but you're just not stressing the body with the heavy weights like you were with the power cycle Absolutely. or the mass cycle. And I tell you what, John, when I started using that kind of philosophy, that's when I started exploding. I remember, as a matter of fact, when I went from a super high volume phase to a, a deloading phase, as we call it now, which at the time I didn't know that's what I was yeah. doing, <laughs> suddenly my arms grew by a whole inch, you know, yeah. in like a couple of weeks. I'm yeah. like, oh my God, what, what have I been doing wrong? You know what I, I mean? Know. I know. It took me years to figure out, okay, every single time I go from a huge high volume phase to like a lower volume phase, 
I, I, I grow, I overcompensate, you know, yeah. and that's when I started saying, oh, you know, maybe this is the way to do things. Yeah. And uh, that's one thing that I think your program does beautifully. It provides a specific uh, deloading phase, which will allow people's body to catch up and just overcompensate and grow. Yeah. So when you combine progressive resistance, increasing progressive resistance with the right amount of recuperation, your body will really respond. And I think that's one of the things, you know, when I was younger too, I always believed in high intensity, high intensity. We have to push it to the limit every time. Right. And when you go into the gym and you're, you're training so hard and you're screaming and you're trying to do more, what's the limit, you know? You don't have to do that in order to grow. I mean, as long as you're progressively increasing the resistance and slowly coaxing the muscles to grow each week, you don't have to train until your eyes are bulging out of your head. You don't have to do forced reps. I mean, how can you judge really the progress that you're making when you're training like that? You go to the gym and you say, I think I'm training hard. I'm, I trained so hard, I was screaming and everything, but I, does that mean you're making progress? Not necessarily. Right. The whole goal is to make progress. And one of the reasons I started this was I watched powerlifters train in the gym. Now, powerlifters are the strongest athletes in the world. And when they train, I noticed that they weren't training like screaming and the guy was forcing reps and things like that. They were just doing set after set after set of a certain amount of weight and their strength was progressively increasing. So by the time they got to their powerlifting competition, they were at their absolute strongest. Right. And this is the same principle. With the MP6 program, you're doing three working sets of each key exercise and you're getting your body adjusted. So when you're in the power phase, the body is getting acclimated to using that weight and using those reps and it's, that's how you're increasing your strength. Then when you go to the mass phase, you find that your strength is way up and you can do now more weight for that six to 10 rep range and that's what's gonna make the muscles grow. And you're progressively increasing and you're making progress with each cycle and you're not going balls to the walls, you're not screaming, you're not overstressing your body, you're not really not taking the chance of injury right. because it's slowly going up. Exactly, basically the key thing is that this program works with the body's response mechanisms, yeah. okay? Yeah. And because of that, then you're gonna go ahead and achieve this incredible result very quickly without the injury or without, you know, the burnout that happens when, when you're just pushing yourself to the limit because exactly. as you and I both know, you can only push yourself so far. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So, awesome. Well, wonderful job with this program, John. I, I hope I hope all of you take uh, advantage of this. It's a wonderful program. Definitely check it out and go ahead and uh, start to implement it, most importantly, and you'll see the uh, kind of uh, muscle gains that you'll be making. All right? Anyways, this is Hugo Rivera and John Hanson. Hope you're having a great day. Take care and train hard.